Thanks Myra and uh, Zaheen for joining us. Um, first of all, Myra, tell me about tell me a bit about yourself and which medical school you're at at the moment. So my name's Myra and I'm a third year student at the University of Manchester. Okay, and Zaheen? Uh, I'm Zaheen and I'm also a third year student at the University of Manchester. Okay. So Zaheen, what is a typical week like at university for you? Um, so I'm currently in my third year and third year is obviously like the first year of clinical placements. So Monday to Thursday, I'll be nine to five in hospitals, just kind of being on the wards, um, talking to patients, maybe doing a couple of procedures. Um, we also have like scheduled teaching sessions as well, where they'll teach us specific clinical skills each week. And then on Fridays, we'll have teaching at our base hospital. So me and Myra are both based at Salford right now. And that's where we have our like case discussion. So each week will be like a new case. And then we'll just kind of talk through it as a group and I mean, in our free time, it's just kind of studying, kind of doing past med, anything that extra that you can do to kind of keep so on top of it. quite intensive, is it, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. Monday to Thursday, you're based where, sorry? Uh, well, so my base hospital is Salford, but yeah. they can send us to like pretty much any hospital yeah. around. So I'm currently at Wigan right now, Wigan right, Hospital. Right, so like tertiary hospital, yeah. 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 So you're there four days of the week, mm -hmm. and the fifth day you're back in Salford. Salford, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, and, and out of those five days, how many of that is lectures that you have to attend? Um, so we don't have lectures, it's more like teaching sessions. Um, like group so, teaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're in groups of six and it'll be like various things. So it'll be talking about maybe how to take a particular history or do like an examination or it might be um, clinical skills teaching. So taking bloods or um, uh, like pretty much anything really that's like in the clinical setting. Uh, and Myra, are you doing the same? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any, any work in the evenings or at the weekends that you're expected to attend? Um, not with university, but obviously outside of university to keep up to yeah. date with your work, uh, you do end up doing evening work yeah. and on yeah. the weekend. Okay. Um, and and uh, Myra, um, how does university studies compare with it, studying for A-levels? I would say that A-levels are more stressful than uni university. Uh, uni's a bit more self-led, so because of that it's a bit less pressure. You can choose when you work, it's more flexible around your uh, schedule. It means you can keep a better work-life balance, you can do everything that you need to do and keep your work when, for whenever you want to do it. Um, the work is harder, but it's more enjoyable because obviously it's something that you want to do uh, and it's a lot more interesting and clinical, so it's a lot more fun. Okay, and, and do you find that you're ha having to work at the weekends as well? Or can you finish your studies Monday to Friday? I think myself personally, I get all my work done Monday to Friday. So if you are organised with your time, you can work maybe 9 to 5 and then after 5pm, like save that time for something that you want to do outside of uni. It's definitely possible. Yeah, yeah good. And what about yourself, uh, Zaheen? How does uh, your um, university studies, you know, especially first year of medical school, how did that compare in doing A-levels, for example? Um, so with first year of medical school, I think the main thing was I thought at first that I could use the same study techniques from A-levels that I I could apply them to like my uni studies. Um, personally, I was like a kind of pen and paper person. So I'd like mm. write out my notes, draw my diagrams. And I found that um, that's quite difficult in terms of coping with the workload, it takes way too much time. So, um, you know, having a laptop, having an iPad, doing everything digitalized is kind of the way to go with uni. Otherwise you're just gonna like, you're gonna be sat there for hours just writing out notes. You have so many notes as well mm, that you need so to keep much. them online yeah, on your laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and all in one place as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'd say definitely don't like waste money on loads of textbooks because you can find everything mm -hmm. online anyway. Um, there's also a library, like Stopford Library has pretty much everything you need if you are a textbook person. Mm -hmm. So don't bother like spending loads and loads of money on textbooks. Okay. So Myra, what was your student accommodation like? Um, my home was lovely. I lived at home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, commuted from home to, uh, yeah. to university. Mm -hmm. And what about yourself? Um, so yeah, I lived out. Personally, don't live in Fallowfield. <laughs> like unless you like the kind of social party vibes like because I lived in Fallowfield and it's just where all the first year comms are but I'd say like I mean first year comms just first year comms. Did you live in a whole residence? Yeah, yeah I did so I lived with seven other people four girls four boys and um, there are like some halls that are kind of like 
like only girls, only boys. So I think Ashburn is only girls and then St. Anselm's, Anselm's only boys. And then you've got, you've got a comms like closer to campus, like city campuses, which are like kind of walking distance from Stopford building. Fallow feels a bit of a trek. It's a 50 minute walk, um, unless you get a bus pass, then it's 15 minutes on the bus. But I would say it depends on what your priority is. So if you're more like, like a social person, then maybe go Fallow Field. But if you're prioritizing like distance from uni and stuff, then maybe go like City, Victoria Park. Okay, were, were meals all included or? Um, so I went, to, I went self catered. So we had like a kitchen. Um, the catered halls, they do still have a kitchen, but it's not like an oven, microwave, mm -hmm. everything. It's like, like literally just a fridge. Basically. What about on, on campus or in the hospital is they? A canteen or staff canteen or um i mean all the hospitals that i've been to they've been there's been like just the general canteen that everyone goes to salford's really expensive for food so you're better off just going to like greg's or subway or somewhere um i remember cool. the first time i got lunch in salford i just got a panini and the salad and the woman at the till said that's 12 pounds yeah and that's i was just hospital. like it'll yeah. eat your to be fair though, that's salford because when i was at wigan like you can get, get literally like a five item meal for two pound fifty sorry bolton even um and then wigan like they have like quite filling meals for like two pound fifty as well so mm -hmm. yeah, and there's meals uh, there's plenty of places to eat on the campus oh 100 yeah. percent. yeah i mean with me <laughs> Wimmy vibes all the way. Okay. Um, uh, Zaheen, um, do you have any advice on uh, or for, for students that are thinking of becoming doctors? Um, I'd say like, make sure that it's something you definitely want to do. Because a lot of people go into it thinking like, oh yeah, it's a lot of money or oh yeah, like it's like good reputation. But realistically, like if that's what you're in for, like in it like for, then you're not going to have a good time because the workload and the stress, like it's a lot to deal with at times. And if you don't have like a clear cut goal, like this is why I want to be a doctor, then you're not going to find it worth it. It's just going to affect your mental health. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So just make, just really make sure that you know that that's what you want to do and be prepared for the fact that it is a massive jump. Like it's a huge workload. And what about yourself, Maya? What advice would you give? I definitely agree with Zaheen. I think if you're thinking about um, the monetary aspect, I would say for the amount of work that you're going to put into medicine, if you put that into most other careers, you would make more money. Um, it has to come from a place of wanting to help people because the things you're going to end up having to do, for example, when you're on placement and when you are a doctor, you couldn't stomach doing them unless you really wanted to help a person. Like deep it, we're not even getting paid and we already have to stay in hospital nine to five. We have to give up our social hours. Like there's so much stuff that we have to sacrifice. So, I mean, I'm not saying that like medicine's a bad like thing mm. to study. Like there are perks to it as well. It's so much fun. But you have to make sure your like reasons are in the right place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and uh, was there any challenges that you faced as a medical student? Um, like academically or like so. Uh, any, any kind of general challenges, um, academic or social or in the, especially the first year? First year, um, I think it was just a case of like obviously living quite far from uni, like Fallowfield campus had its kind of issues as well. Um, I think there were good things in the sense that like because I moved out so I was able to learn how to kind of live, live on my own, like cook for myself and stuff. Um, but I think it was mainly just the academics really, like I really like misjudged how much more it was than A-level. And as someone who kind of always performed highly in school, like I kind of just had that mentality, like, oh, as long as I keep that work ethic, then I'm going to get by medicine. But it's really not a case of how good a student you are. It's just about like, it's that plus time management skills, organization skills and everything. And I think sometimes living in halls can sometimes get a bit lonely but I feel like as long as you've got your people like definitely attend a lot of societies that interest you mm -hmm. um you know pick what I, pick the things that you actually like and not just things that other people are doing do you know what I mean like and um you know like as long as you've got kind of something outside of medicine that you can engage in then I think you'll be fine what about you uh, Myra any any challenges especially living from home um I think initially my commute was a big struggle for me. It would take an hour and a half for me to get in. And I felt like it, I felt a bit isolated. Um, everybody who lived out was like going to each other's houses or doing societies together. Whereas I would just go to my lectures and go straight home after because I was tired. Um, that was a bit tough, but when I got a car, it kind of wasn't as bad. To overcome that, I think you just have to really manage your work-life balance, really be organized with your time and put time aside to do the things that you want to do. 
Um, another struggle that I had when I started clinical years was I would get really emotional when talking to patients. Um, for example, I'd relate it to, if I was talking to an old lady, I'd think about my grandma or something and I'd get really emotional. It's important to kind of like, I think it comes with time, but you learn to separate the person from your own emotions in your own life and you learn to manage it a lot better. And like definitely when you can invest time into like your friendships within the medical course as well, because the only people, the people that are gonna, are gonna understand the struggle the best are other medical students. So make sure you're making like good friends within the course as well as outside, because you're gonna need those friendships when life starts to get difficult. You yeah. Know? And a lot of the time, the only people that really understand what you're going through are other medical students, because um, on different courses, some, a lot of them have less workload and they can do other things, whereas, yeah. You'll probably find that most of your friends do end up being medical students just because like our general timetable, even in first and second year, is so different to the rest of the uni. Like reading weeks are literally different to the rest of the uni. Yeah. So you'll probably find that that's the case anyway. But, you know, just make sure you're picking the right people mm -hmm. and kind of organising your time in that way as well. And when you're in social settings, even the library, don't be afraid to talk to people and make friends. Most of the friends that I've made at uni are just people that I sat next to at the library and spoke to and then they end up being the closest people in your life. So make sure when you go to uni, you make an effort to put yourself out there and meet new people and have new experiences. Yeah. Have, you, have you got any thoughts about what you might want to do once you qualify? Um, so I've had my heart set on paediatrics since literally day one. Um, to be fair, like I was told that it was one of the busiest specialties, but I did my work experience in paediatrics before coming to med school. And I also did like adult hospital work experience as well. And I just found that the vibe of a paediatric hospital is just so much nicer because also the kids like they don't get bogged down with their disease like they're not like it doesn't make them depressed or like miserable like they still maintain their energy and they're still playful and stuff even when they're going through the worst of it which is why like I've noticed that like kids have higher recovery rates they get better from worse diseases and that might be because they're physically younger and more fit but also just the mentality of like yeah I'm ill but I can still like you know play with my toys or like engage and stuff so that's why I really want to go into pediatrics. What about yourself uh, Myra? I actually want, I'm quite interested in paediatrics as well, um, for most of the same reasons as Zaheen, to be honest. I, for my work experience for getting into medicine, I did volunteering um, at a netball club for little girls, and I was just so passionate about it, and I just cared about it so much, and the children had so much energy, and it was very refreshing. To work with yeah. younger people. And it's, it's like, because I talked to the <coughs> pediatric doctors on work experience and um, they just say like, it's, it's really rewarding, especially when you can, you know, you take someone's child who's sick or injured and you do everything you can to make them better and then you give their child back to them, you know, all fixed and mm -hmm. the gratitude that the parents have as well, it really feels like you've, you've done some things, you know what I mean? Yeah. They say you have um, two parents as a pediatrician, <laughs> the parent and the child. Yeah. Yeah, two patients, mm. not two parents. <laughs> yeah, two patients. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was it like during the um, COVID pandemic? How, how was your um, training affected? So we joined medical school towards the end of COVID. So I think the main way it affected us is that our lectures were all online. Was it for the first? Just for year? the first year. For yeah, the first yeah. year. And to be honest, I think I preferred the online lectures um, because you can listen to them at your own speed. Um, and also you don't have to come all the way into uni. Well. Exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think they still do record lectures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, they happen in person now, but like they'll put the lecture up on the, like on the system, like yeah. 20, within 20 But I think I preferred it when it was online as well, because mm. you could see that cursor. <gasps> Honestly, moves. like to be fair, even if you go to the in-person lectures, I'm not discouraging people from going to the lectures, but like it, they move at such a fast pace that you'll probably have to end up rewatching the lecture anyway. Yeah. Um, so just make sure you have like a study system in place for taking notes as well. Or definitely, if you haven't done the pre-reading, there is no point going to a lecture because oh, it will yeah. go over you your head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or read a little bit about what the lecture's about before you yeah. attend. So it, is it optional to attend the lectures yeah, in there's, person? There's some sessions where they take your attendance. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair, Manchester's kind of on it for, <laughs> for attendance, especially in first and second year. Yeah, um, so just, just the sessions where they're taking your attendance, make sure to turn up to them. Um, but otherwise, like... You no, turn up to everything. Turn up to everything. Ignore us. Yeah, to everything. Everything. Make the most real. of your education, guys. You're paying nine grand. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, 
at the moment, there's lots of challenges with the NHS, with you know doctor strikes and uh, consultant strikes and all these things, and have nurse strikes. How has that affected your uh, training? Um, so, I mean, we currently, like, we literally just went through a strike week now, and um, I didn't really notice it in first and second year, but now that we're in third year, you kind of see, like, when you're trying to go into wards or to get, like, sign-offs done, and there's no doctors there, or, like, there's no one to tell you which patients to talk to. So sometimes it can be, a, like, difficult in that sense, because obviously we've got weekly requirements for our sign-offs, um, and if there's no doctors to sign you off, then you're just going to struggle on you. So that's why they made the block that we're doing now, they made it, like, formative, so it doesn't really count towards anything at the end of the year because of the doctor strikes. Um, but I feel like because they made it formative, people are becoming like relaxed about it. Do you know what I mean? So um, it can be annoying as a medical student, just trying to track down doctors to sign you off. Um, but yeah, there's not really much you can do about that, I guess. Mm. At the moment, I'm in Bury, which is quite a um, not busy hospital. Um, and the doctors, when I go on wards for the past week, they've just told me to go away because there's nothing there for me, mm. which isn't yeah. really usually the case. Usually doctors are very helpful. Yeah, and consultants are literally impossible to track down. <laughs> like, that you can't find them. Unless you've got like a scheduled meeting with them, you probably mm. won't find them. And even then they might forget that they they're have a meeting with you. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, they've I got that much to do. I would say a tip for clinical years, when you're on a placement, within your ward, you'll find one doctor that's really passionate about teaching and always has time for you, cling on to them. They will be a Do whatever line. you need to get the like, I mean, I've got friends who literally got like the doctor's WhatsApp numbers and stuff. Really? <laughs> sign yeah. off, like within Shaw, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so smart. Yeah, that's yeah. so smart. Okay, Zayn, what, what did you do for your work experience? Um, so I did two lots of work experience before sixth form. Well, the second one was like during sixth form. But I did two weeks in oncology. So my dad works in Liverpool, Claverage. Um, so I just shadowed him. And that was the first time I've kind of set foot in hospital and seen like kind of the behind the scenes, like what doctors are doing when they're not seeing patients. And that's when I kind of deeped that note taking is a huge thing. Like if you don't write down everything that... A patient says when you see them then like the whole system will fall apart because the patients are seen by so many individual like professionals mm -hmm. that they need to know like what was the last thing that they said like what was the last state the patient was in and then when I did my second lot of work experience that's when I decided that I wanted to like do pediatrics because I kind of got the differences between the adult hospital and the pediatric hospital as I've mentioned and I kind of um, got an insight into the different approaches that doctors have to use when they're talking to kids as, as opposed to talking to adults as well um, but I really enjoyed my pediatric placement it was one week in respiratory and it was during winter time as well so it was really busy so I got to see a lot and yeah really enjoyed it how did you actually organize it um, so obviously the first one was like <laughs> with my dad so if you've got parents who are doctors then you can take advantage um, with the second one I basically just went on the because I'm from Sheffield so I did my work experience in the Sheffield Children's Hospital I basically just went on um, the website and they have like this option where you can just fill in a form for work experience. You just say like what school you go to, what you're trying to apply, like apply to, what kind of experience you're trying to get. And then you have like a list of departments that you can you can choose three options and you rank them in order. And then if your application gets accepted, you'll get allocated to a department for one week and it'll just be like one week in the hospital. And you'll get allocated a supervisor and a team and everything and you'll be told where to go. So it's like it's really good. They sort it out for you and everything. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And what about yourself, Myra? I filled out the same form that Zaheen filled out and I got put on the respiratory ward at Berry. The thing that I distinctly remember was all the junior doctors sat around me telling me, do dentistry, don't do medicine. And I was thinking, I was very confused because they're doctors and they're telling me not to do it. Do you think of a reason for Um, No. I feel like a lot of... We're not confused anymore, by the way. Yeah, I <laughs> we know why they said that. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of medics say do dentistry just because um, the workload is less. It's not actually my brother. And you is get also rich quicker student. as well. <laughs> yeah, you get paid more. Yeah. There's a massive shortage of dentists, so there's a lot more demand for what you do. Um, but yeah, it but it, like it goes back to intention. And like, mm -hmm. is your intention, you know, getting rich quickly, or like, you know, getting a stable job quickly, <coughs> or is yeah. it like? Because also with dentistry, like it's still a healthcare profession, but it's a very like narrowed down, specialized healthcare profession. Yeah. Whereas with medicine, you see literally everything to do with the human body before you choose your specialty. Mm -hmm. And that's all the way up until F2 and even like IMT3 and stuff like that. So you get like a lot 
more of a variety of like education. Yeah. But nobody in my family is a doctor, so I didn't have any sort of like way in to get any work experience. So it was such a struggle for mm -hmm. me. It ended up being like bringing up like old people's care homes, yeah, 100%. Um, bringing up like netball teams to ask if I can volunteer with them. Um, and it's just about be persevering with that. Somebody will say yes. Most general hospitals will have like a section on their website specifically for applying to work experience. Mm -hmm. So just find as many forms as you can like even if I know it might seem scary just kind of like bothering healthcare professionals and asking work experience but it's just something you've got to do even if it's just going to your local GP and asking like is there like any availability for me to get some work experience here like it can't hurt so just do it because they've started really drilling down on work experience in interviews mm -hmm. um, they started asking a lot more about like about it relating to your work experience so definitely get that on board and some unis have made it like a requirement now for their application it, yeah. so there's also virtual work experience days mm -hmm. that you can do if you can't access anything. Um, yeah. yeah. Is there any other advice you'd give to prospective students, prospective medical students? Um, I'd say like whatever expectation of medical school you have, chances are you're gonna like it's gonna be different to what you expect, like regardless. Um, so just like. Try not to overburden yourself, you know, don't overwhelm yourself. Have people that you can go to if you have problems. Um, and keep your families in the loop as well if you can, because like your family actually does help you with like uni stuff and everything as well. Even if they're yeah. not like from a medical background, they can help you on the emotional side. You know, just definitely have, like focus on having a support network in place just in case anything goes wrong. Cause uni is like a whole different world to school. Like, it's the big wide world. It's, it's, it's you're, you're not on your own, but you're learning how to find your own feet. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And also don't deep, like, a lot of people are stressed about, like, making friends or, like, getting on with their flatmates if they're moving out. Honestly, university, like, I can tell you, I changed friendship groups, like, three times. <laughs> um, university is just all about finding people you click with. It's not about, like, who you knew before or, like, who you live with. It's generally just who do you click with. Mm -hmm. Like, just focus on that more than anything else. And focus on enjoying every moment. Mm -hmm. In... I remember in high school, I looked back in year 11 and I was like, I wished it all away. Yeah. So when I started medical school, I told myself I'm not going to wish it away. Like every day that you go in, every day that you see your friends, just enjoy every second of really, it. Really like appreciate it, honestly. Yeah, because like, these are the best years of your life. Mm -hmm. 100%. I know it might not feel like it at times, but then we'll graduate and we'll be like, oh. and yeah, we'll miss it. We'll miss <laughs> yeah, it. exactly. Because right now we have not no responsibility really. Yeah. yeah apart yeah. from our own education. I feel like I'm not ready because third year is meant to be the, like for Manchester anyway, third year is meant to be the most chill out of the five years um, because you know you've just started clinical placements no one expects you to like be able to do anything really another tip actually this is a big one don't cram at the end no that's not gonna work at all that's you'll, not gonna work. you'll lose hair listen it might work for GCSEs even for A levels at a stretch it's not gonna work in medical school just every week just at least do three days a week where you're just sat in the library for a couple of hours yeah. and when it comes to exam season and you know the content you'll thank yourself. It's honestly not gonna do you any harm at all. There's times where it's been exam season, I've been going through all the weeks of like revision. On the weeks where I did the all the work, like all my lectures, all my flashcards in that week, I'll know the stuff really well. And then in the weeks where I maybe didn't work as much as I should have, I'm thinking like, I don't have a clue about any of the stuff. Also, you don't have to attend every single person. Like, it's not a big deal. Like. You'll get to second, third year and you'll be like, that was such a waste of time anyway. Yeah. Like, I've got my people and do you know what I mean? Chances are you're not even going to meet your closest friends at precious events. A lot of so, the uni events in general are bad. They're good. just bad. They're not good. They're just <laughs> bad. Like, don't, honestly, people spend like 50, 60 pounds on wristbands and stuff. And yeah. it's like, why would you no do that? Way. Like, don't do it. Honestly, and it's not worth it. Yeah. You'll yeah. always, I've never not regretted going the, to The best <laughs> places to meet, if meeting people is genuinely a concern, the best places to do it are like society events. Like, yeah. you know, go to the society's fair and pick in. your interests. You will find people with the same interests as you and you'll get on with 100%. them. Do you know what I mean? 100%. And Manchester University ISOC is... Incredible. Incredible. Very good. Actually, very good. Very yeah. good. Like the story nights. If there's something a bit more casual, I feel like in an, at events people don't really meet each other. Mm, you yeah. meet people at the, the like, more casual, low key kind of. Yeah. Well. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks, uh, Myra, and, and, and James. It's been uh, very useful. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you.